Welcome to Highway Christian Fellowship. I'm Pastor Ralph, one of the pastors here, and it's my joy to welcome you to our service today. We're just simply a family of spirit-filled followers of Jesus who are on a journey of loving God, loving others, and seeking ways to serve our world. And we invite you to join us on this journey. We trust that today's message will be an encouragement to you in your walk of faith. And if you have questions or would like to know more, you can connect with us at hcfsydney.ca. And a pastor would be privileged to speak with you and share with you how you can know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and to make a difference in our world. God bless, and let's enjoy the service today. Lord. Amen. You never know what's going to happen some Sundays. Communion, there, there are two Sundays in, in, in our season that I, I call Anything Can Happen Sunday. One is uh, Fifth Sunday when we just come together, share testimonies and worship and pray together, but also on Communion Sunday, we never know what God's going to do. But each and every day should be lived, not knowing, but expecting God to always be working and filling and doing something. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 5 in just a moment. And today's question is this. Is anyone thirsty? We sang it this morning, and I'd like us to sing it a little later as, as we pray around the front today. But is anyone thirsty? Well, today, Canada is about to make history again, my friends. Not since 2021 have two uh, megaliths come together in a fight to the finish. In 2021, the Montreal Canadiens, they fought to the bitter end, but unfortunately were taken by the Tampa Bay Lightning. But today, today, my friends, it could be very different as Edmonton against fights for that coveted Western Conference final that will lead them to the Stanley Cup playoffs starting next week. No, I need to ask you a question. As you sit down to watch this game this afternoon, what do you like to drink? What do you like to drink? Well, I've got a couple solutions for you. When I like to sit down and watch a game, I like to sit down with my very favorite bottled beverage fresh from the fridge hopefully in an ice-cold glass. Now, what I'd like to do is a little bit of a test this morning. I am going to raise one bottle after another, and you cheer for your favorite beverage. Are you ready? Are you all set? Here we go. One, two, three. Okay. Not too bad, not too bad. Let me do that again because it was almost a tie. So let's try it again. Okay, again a tie. Well, listen, let me break the tie this morning. The best beverage that you can have to watch the game is A&W Root Beer. Oh, that is good. Is anyone thirsty? Yes, I, I try water. I add sugar and, and, and something dark called root beer. Anyway. Listen, we have been on a journey together, and uh, we have been looking at the person and work of the Holy Spirit in our everyday lives. And I just want to take a moment to publicly thank Pastor Sue for 
uh, filling in for me so ably last Sunday. It has done my heart. Yes, show your appreciation. And, and, and the worship team from CLCC, I understand, did a fabulous job, and I'm so thankful for Pastor Curtis and his team and their willingness to serve us last week. But as I listened to Sue's message online, I, I, I was absolutely amazed about what the Holy Spirit does. I had mentioned to Sue, you know, the scripture that I had planned to preach from, but it would be whatever she felt she was going to talk. And as I listened, you, you know what amazes me about the Holy Spirit is Sue said everything that I wanted to say, but only better. And that's just the work of the Holy Spirit. He knows what needs to be said, when it's to be said, and he will use the right person at the right time to speak his word. And so I'm so thankful for Sue and her willingness and her heart to just preach what Holy Spirit had led on her heart. Well, listen, this is our final message in this series. I could probably go on for weeks on end to talk about this topic, but we will bring it to an end today. But I want us to know that while this teaching may be completed today, the work and ministry of the Holy Spirit continues on. He never stops working. Amen? In the last number of weeks, we have learned who the Holy Spirit is. He is the third person of the Trinity. He is God himself who indwells every believer, providing assurance for their salvation, sealing them, giving, providing guidance and comfort. He empowers bel believers with his dunamis Holy Spirit power that we would be effective witnesses for Christ. And as Sue so ably and practically shared, the Holy Spirit also equips every believer with gifts for the purpose of serving others. The gifts do not belong to us. They are the Father's gift to us. They are not given to hoard. They are given to serve. And I thank so, so, so much for the word that Sue shared last week reminding us of this truth. Every believer, every believer that is here today, you know Jesus as your Savior. You have been indwelt by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit, and the Spirit equips you to serve him effectively. He has done this so that we could better serve. We are not gifted or empowered just to feel good. We're not gifted and empowered just to have a good time around the altar. We are not given the Holy Spirit to give us a platform to show everyone how gifted we may be. No, the Holy Spirit has been given to every believer to be used to serve others every day in every arena of life. The final question for us today is this. We want to consider, we, the final question is, how does all this work practically in everyday life? We're going to leave this service in about two hours. <laughs> Just kidding. At least, no less than three. No. We're going to be leaving this service this morning. Some of us will be encouraged and blessed. Others may leave. Maybe nothing will happen at all. The question, though, is not just what God does for you here around these altars. The question isn't what God does for you sitting in our comfortable seats. No, the question, though, is once we leave these doors, what do we do with the Holy Spirit at home between our husbands and our wives? As we raise our children and they come to us for the umpteenth time. Is there anything to drink? By the way. Mm, that is good. Anyone thirsty? Does the Holy Spirit continue in these practical ways? And I am so glad to be able to share with you. 
that the Holy Spirit doesn't just work on one Sunday at a camp meeting or at a church altar 50 years ago or 20 years ago or last Sunday or even today. But he continues and wants to continue to bless, to fill, to empower you so that you can serve him as effectively as you can. And so today I want us to know that it's one thing to experience the work of the Spirit in our own life, but it's another thing to be used by the Spirit as we edify and comfort one another. And it's another thing for the Holy Spirit to, en to empower us to serve and to witness for others. But He is also with us in the Monday to Sunday grind of everyday life. Aren't you glad for that today? I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. If you're reading on uh, your phone or another device, I'm doing something I don't always do. Normally I read from the New International Version, but today I am going to read from the English Standard Version. So you can read it along in, on the screen or on your devices or if you have that translation with you. Ephesians chapter 5, let's begin at verse 15. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Man, if, the t if that was true of Paul's day, how much more could we say that of our day today? Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Again. Each of us here today wants to know God's will. Whether you're a young couple, newly married, and starting out on life, whether you're finishing university and uh, looking forward to that first career move, whether you're, you've been retired for years and you're wondering what else is new, God wants you, wants you to know his plan, purpose, and will for your life. And so he says in verse 18, do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalm and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Father, I thank you today for your word. And now, Lord, as I share your word, as I teach your word today as best as I can, Holy Spirit, I need you to take this word and I'm asking for a fresh infilling, a fresh anointing as I share this. May I share it with clarity, compassion, with care, and with the desire and, and, and I to glorify Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. So, is anyone thirsty? How does the Holy Spirit fullness impact my everyday relationships in my marriage, my family, at work, and in the church? Paul says that the answer is, therefore, be filled with the Spirit. He's reminding us it is in being filled with the Spirit that gives us the ability to live the Christ life in every area of life. This therefore that we read in verse 17 actually is the last therefore in a series of therefores in, this, in the last two chapters. So let's do a quick uh, summary of that and end with the caveat, be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 4 verse 1, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling in which you have been called. Be filled with the Spirit. Chapter 4 verse 17, so therefore this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. Be filled with the Spirit. Chapter 4, 25 and 26, Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be filled with the Spirit. 
Chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Be filled with the Spirit. Verses 7 and 8, Therefore do not become partners with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Be filled with the Spirit. Verse 17, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Be filled with the Spirit. Verse 17, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Be filled with the Spirit. It is being filled with the Spirit that gives you the power to say no to sin and yes to God's will. It is living in the fullness of the Spirit that gives us the wisdom and ability to be the kind of godly husbands we need to be and the wives God has called us to be. It is being filled and being full of the Spirit and walking and living in that fullness that gives us the ability to be able to be young people who, when our parents drive us nuts, can say, yes, I will do that. It is being full of the Spirit and walking in that fullness. It gives us the ability as we walk to work and we're listening to all the obscenities that keeps our minds and hearts pure. Yes, we are called to live and walk in the Spirit. Not just once a day, not just once every 10 years, but each and every day in every avenue of our lives. How does this work? Well, first of all, notice that Paul says he gives us a contrast. Do not get drunk with wine. That's debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. That's the contrast. And then he identifies the results of what it means to be filled with the Spirit. These are not additional commands, but results of the primary command to be filled. Addressing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, I know that there are some here today, look at that, they read that and going, yes, how I love to worship, how I love to sing songs, how I love to turn on the radio to listen to the station out of Seattle that plays such beautiful worship music. And yes, being walking in the fullness of the Spirit does impact our worship, not just in church as we gather and sing, but out in the everyday throes of life. But I believe in addition to not just worshiping with our hearts, but it speaks of a joyfulness, a joy in the Lord. My friends, I can't, yesterday it was so awesome when Roland was singing And uh, Roland and Sarah and Arhan were playing and singing. Uh, uh, It was awesome to see all these children coming onto the property and all of them saying to their parents that they wanted to come and hear what the music was. Why? Because it was bringing them joy. There is something about music, and there is something about music directed to God. There is something when our hearts are directed to God, full of the Spirit, He fills us with his joy secondly as we walk in the fullness of the spirit it demonstrates a life of thankfulness and gratitude giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ when we walk in the fullness of the spirit we look at our experiences through God's perspective when we hear that unfortunate news from the doctor Yes, we may be shocked, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit gives us the assurance of his presence that he's holding us. We are thankful because no matter what we go through, he reminds us that he is in control. And no matter what happens, in the end, God is glorified. Hallelujah. And thirdly, A spirit-filled, full life is demonstrated by a life of mutual submission to one another, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. 
No, I want to be clear about this this morning. Submission does not mean we become doormats for others to walk over us. Neither does it give us permission to assert undue authority over our spouses or our children or those that we work with or for. What it does mean is that as we are walking, first of all, in submission to God, and we are walking in the fullness, we look to see for God's best in the lives of all those that we encounter. We are submission, first of all, to God, to his will, to his purpose, and we live to see others also walking in that fullness. And as we do, Paul tells us in the latter part of this chapter into chapter 6 that as we walk in the fullness of the Spirit, it impacts our relationships with our spouse, with our kids, with our parents, who we work with, where we go to school, and even in the church. Be filled with the Spirit. Is anyone thirsty? Pastor, what does this look like? How do I know I'm walking in the fullness of the Spirit? Well, first of all, you need to ask yourself, what am I choosing? Who am I choosing to follow? Paul introduces this command first by making a contrast. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. He speaks this way not because he's a teetotaler or he's got a holier-than-thou attitude towards others. He says this not because he's a prude. He speaks this way because the days are evil. The days the Ephesian church lived was fraught with all kinds of potential pitfalls and temptations. Over-drinking and drunkenness was only one of those pitfalls. You may say today, well, pastor, I'm pretty safe. I, I don't drink. I, I don't even drink root beer. But if Paul were writing to the 21st century church in Canada, and he was writing to us, the church of, of God here in Sydney, I wonder what words he might use in its place. I wonder if he would look at the church today and he would say don't be gluttonous don't overwork or how about too much television or social media and yes it is possible I understand not sure if I believe it yet but yet you can't have too much coffee Paul tells us do not get drunk with wine because something fundamental to our wholeness is at stake. When we give ourselves to anything else but God, if we give ourselves anything else but to his will, if we're following anything else but him, we are going to be filling our hearts with things that are going to distract us and take us away from his will. You see, everyone is a disciple of something or someone. So the question is never, will I be a disciple? The question always will be, whose disciple will I be? And if not Jesus, then whose? If I'm not going to walk in the fullness of the Spirit, then what am I going to walk full of? question is never will I be impacted by a spirit for uh, uh, Daryl Johnson right asks this wonderful question in his commentary the question is never will I be impacted by a spirit for everyone is impacted by a spirit of some sort the question is always of all the spirits that work in the world around me to which will I respond to which will I yield and the only filling that finally and completely and wholly fills is to be filled with the Spirit. Is anyone thirsty? So what does this look like, Pastor? 
Let me quick, quickly share with you four things, and then I want to share with you a story as we lead into communion. First of all, to be sp- filled with the Spirit is to be filled with the person. Earlier in this letter, Paul speaks about being sealed by the Spirit. Then he talks about being indwelt by the Spirit. He also talks about being empowered by the Holy Spirit. We are sealed, indwelled, strengthened by the Spirit. That is who lives in us. God himself, by the Spirit, lives in each and every believer. We are filled with a person. Secondly, this command says, you be filled. You. It's for you and for me. Not just for the pastor, not just for, for Nourish and the, and, and, and the team that greets us every morning. By the way, if I can just put in a word here, if you're looking for a place to serve, can I share with you one of the great places you can serve is in our First Impressions ministry. And if you're wondering about that, you can talk to Nourish, and you'd be help, happy to, to see you put in place. But here's the thing. It's you, you, right where you are. He wants to fill you with his spirit. And not just once, not just today, but that thirdly, you would be filled continuously with the Holy Spirit. This command is passive and at the same time in the present tense. It emphasizes the continuous outflow of the Spirit. Literally, it's translated, keep on being filled. It's not just what happened 10, 20, 30, 50 years ago. It's not just what happened last Sunday. It's not just what happened at the last conference you attended. No, God wants you to know the fullness of his Spirit each and every day. And so he invites us all, come, be filled. Come, be filled. So is anyone thirsty this morning? God calls you to make a decision today to be filled. As you come this morning, we come confessing anything that we might be, that that might be in our way of being filled. We confess the fear that the Spirit would take us to a place where we really don't want to go. Well, I've got good news for you. He probably will because he knows exactly what he's doing. Oh, he's not going to force you. He's not going to push you. He's not going to, to, to do any kind of calisthenics on you. No, the Holy Spirit knows you and he will fill you and you will know it. So why don't we just simply let go? Let go of your need to control your destiny and future. Just let him have his way in your marriage, in your family, in your career. Let him have every place in your heart's home. And decide now to be filled with the Spirit. I'm glad our friend Deb is here this morning because she can testify to the story that I'm about to share. I've told some people this story one-on-one, and I've told you the story of how the Lord filled me with the Spirit when I was 14 years of age. But I don't know if I have shared this next story with you. And I wanted to begin about 30 years ago in Kingston, Ontario, I was sitting in my lazy boy chair in my family room. Sue was at work. The kids were at school. I had a neck brace around my neck because I had just recently broken my neck during a party with the young people that I was pastoring. And as I recall, I remember sitting there and I decided to have words with the Lord going, God, how could this happen? How could you let this happen? 
I'm supposed to be a youth pastor. I'm supposed to show them how, Lord, how can I be a youth pastor like that? Why would you let this happen? And I forget what show I was watching. This, this was long before the days of internet preachers and YouTube, so I had to go with TV preachers. And I can't remember who I was watching and the speaker just stopped. He turned and he almost read me like a book as he had this word of prophecy that spoke very deeply to my heart. I turned the TV off and I began to pray. And I felt as if the Holy Spirit was speaking to my heart saying, if you will let me, I will completely transform your idea of what ministry is. So I said, okay, God, whatever you want to do. At that point, we had resigned our church that we were pastoring in Kingston, and Sue and I didn't know where we were to go, and so we decided to go to this church that was meeting in a Catholic high school. And Sue had known the, the pastor growing up in Brockville, and I had only known him through the ministerial, but we decided to go, and when we went to this school, Man, it, it was just incredible. It, it, there was just such a love there, and the sense and the presence of God was so evident. And so we decided that we would make this our church home for however long God would have us stay in Kingston while we were in transition. And the Lord opened so many doors, and I have to let you know, I was very conservative in those days. More conservative than many of you think I am now if that's possible. And I enjoyed watching people worship extemporaneously. I, I enjoyed people watching people, you know, have the Holy Ghost shakes. I enjoyed people enjoying times around the altar. I could sit back, relax, and enjoy what God was doing in other people because, hey, He's doing it in them. I don't have to worry about me. Our church, the church, City Christian Center, had been very positively and powerfully impacted by what was referred to as the airport renewal. Some of you may remember that from the 90s. And I had heard about it, though what I had heard did not pay it any compliments, and I really didn't want anything to do with the weird, the untoward, or the spooky. And thankfully, our pastor, he, he led the renewal in our church so very ably and scripturally. It's what kept me going there. After we had been there a, a, a while, Pastor Dave announced that uh, he was going to add some staff members, and he had hired a youth pastor, John Sedano, and um, he invited me to join him part-time on the staff as the, if you can believe it, the junior high and the seniors pastor. Talk about a change, going from the junior high group to the seniors. I went to the junior high group to rest. <laughs> and things were great. Things were absolutely great. And then one day, Pastor Dave announced to us as a staff and the board leadership that if anyone wanted to be a board member or a staff of this church, then they had to attend at least one conference at the airport so they have an understanding of what God's doing in our church. And inside, I didn't say anything to anyone. I said, there's no way I am going to the airport. No way on God's green earth. But I wanted to keep my job. And I respected Pastor Dave enough that, okay, we'll go. So we went to the pastor's conference, and God is so good because all of the speakers that week were, were speakers that we would have heard at any of our general conferences in the PAOC. And God was doing amazing things, and if you've ever had the opportunity to have been there, you will know that it was a huge renovated warehouse on the airport grounds, hence the airport church. And... It could accommodate a couple thousand people. And what they would do is during the worship time, people would have opportunity for prayer. And so they had masking tape down each of the aisles. And if you wanted prayer, you could step out into the aisles and you could 
have someone come, a trained counselor, come and quietly pray with you. I love that. It was like God knew exactly what I needed. And so we went through the week. Pastor Dave got a blessing and a prophecy. Pastor John got a blessing and a prophecy. Uh, Joe and Jenny got blessings and prophecies. And, and Rick, and, Ra and, Ra Rick and, and Rachel, it was like everyone got it but me. Nothing. And I was glad. Good. And then there was one night. I think it was the night before we were going to leave. I am praying just quietly. I, ste I actually stepped out into the aisle to have someone pray with me, and no one came and prayed with me. No one. So I just continued to pray. And this has not happened to me often. But when it does, it's so real to me. And in my spirit, I felt as if the Lord was showing me a vision of the playground the playground that I used to play in in my neighborhood I saw the swings I saw the monkey bars saw the tree that we would all climb in but unlike the playground that I remember there was this chain link fence around it and it was padlocked and as I walked up to the to, to the gate I looked in and there it was empty it was dusty it was there was nothing there but I wanted to get in so so badly and I felt it felt the Holy Spirit speaking to me you're free to come in Ralph you're free to come in you're invited to come in. And I would say, Pass, I'd say, Lord, I can't. It's locked. And it was as if the Lord said to me, it's not locked on my side. It's only locked on your side. And you have the key to come in. I didn't tell a soul about that. I think I told, I believe I told Sue what happened afterwards? Well, that, sun, that following Sunday, oh my goodness, Pastor Dave was going to have each of us come up and share what God had done for us and any word that God has spoken to us about. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, if I share that story, they're going to think I'm nuts. My credentials are out the window. I'm going to be kaput. John got up and shared, Pastor Dave shared, Joe and Jenny shared, Rick Shock shared, they all shared, and I had I felt I had nothing. I just went, I went up there and said, Yeah, I, I was glad I went, and these were the speakers that blessed me, but I didn't say a thing. Pastor Dave's mom was visiting that morning. And after the service, we had, had an altar time and Remember, Sue, Sue and Deb, I mean, the altars were filled with children lying prostrate under the power of God. I remember praying for my son, Philip, as he was filled with the Holy Spirit. It was so powerful, and after everything was said and done, everyone was getting ready to leave, and I'm thinking, phew, nothing happened. But inside, there was a hunger. There was this, oh God, God, if you can do it with these kids, why can't you do it for me? But I changed that prayer. I said, God, you can do it for me if you can do it for these kids. And I remember getting ready. I got up after praying, and, and I heard past Pastor, Pastor Dave's mom talking with someone, and she turned to me, and she said something that just, she said something about a playground, and I just looked at her. And she just took her hand like this, as if she were throwing a ball, and in my spirit, 
I saw what was like a lightning bolt hitting me. I ended up prostrate on the ground, God just filling me afresh, and God just doing a fresh new work in my life. My friends, I want you to know that God the Holy Spirit is here. If you have known him, you do know him. Maybe it's been a long time since you've experienced a fresh infilling of his spirit. I want to, you to know that you are invited to come. Come, come be filled. Come be refilled. Come, come and receive his spirit because he says, come and have a drink. Is anyone thirsty today? Is anyone thirsty? Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Worship team, would you come back and join me? We're going to receive communion together and then we're going to open up these altars this morning. Pastor, why do we call it an altar? For two reasons. In the Old, Te in the Old Testament, the altar was the place where you came to bring a sacrifice. And Paul says in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him, for that is your reasonable act of worship. And we call it an altar because I don't know about you, but I need some altering once in a while. I need him to change my heart. I need him to change those areas of my heart. Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. And the Apostle Paul writes in chapter 11, I received from the Lord what I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Would you open that first film? And take out that piece of cracker, hold it in your hand. And let's lift it up. Lord Jesus, we believe this represents your body that was broken for us. We remember the stripes upon your body, those stripes whereby we receive healing, salvation, wholeness, mentally, physically, emotionally. And we thank you and we receive this with Thanks. Hallelujah. Just a minute, minute, my brother. We're going to have plenty of time in a moment. Open up the cup. Lord, this cup is your blood that was poured out for our salvation in Jesus' name. We give you praise as we receive this together, you remind us of the sacrifice of your death on the cross. So with humble thankfulness, we give you praise. Let's partake together. So is anyone thirsty today? The Lord says, come. Come and take a drink of his spirit. Let him fill you afresh today. In Jesus' name, let's stand together. Thank you for being with us. And we trust that today's message has indeed been an encouragement to you. Again, if you would like more information for our church, you can connect with us at hcfsydney.ca. We believe that growth happens in community. And if you live in the Sydney or Peninsula area, or maybe you're visiting, we would love the opportunity to meet you in person. 
Our church is located at 10364 McDonald Park Road in Sydney. We're right in between the airport and the highway. We look forward to you being with us every Sunday at 1030. God bless and have a wonderful week.